In this video, we'll be looking at constant acceleration. Question one, an adventurer has just departed on a journey in a hot air balloon that is rising at three meters per second. When the balloon is 65 meters above the ground, the adventurer drops the sandbag over the side of the balloon. Neglecting air resistance, find the time in seconds to the nearest one hundredth of a second for the sandbag to hit the ground. So we all should draw some sort of diagram about this. And we see there's the flight of our balloon going up. The sandbag is dropped over the side. And the most important thing is we see that it continues to go up before it starts to go down. The first thing we need to do is set up where we're going to put our starting point and what we call position. Then we're going to list what the question gives us. We see in the question that U was three meters per second. The time is what we've got to find out. The acceleration is minus 9.8 because we said positive was upwards. And the displacement is minus 65 because we set S equals zero here. And, the, and when it hits the ground, it'll be at minus 65. So once we have all this information, we, we will use the equation S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So we're in the calculator page and we're going to use solve. So menu, three, one, and going off our conditions, so we have minus 65 equals 3t plus a half, we'll just put it as divide by, times minus 9.8t squared. and we're solving for t, and we press enter. So we get two answers, one which is negative and one which is positive. So we were told to work this out to one hundredth of a second, so the answer is 3.96 seconds. Question two, a constant force of magnitude p newtons accelerates a particle of mass seven kilograms in a straight line from a speed of six meters per second to 24 meters per second over a distance of 25 meters. Find the magnitude of P. So again, we should draw some sort of diagram and we see we have our particle and we see we have the normal reaction and the 7G and we have P, the constant force. We then have to look at what we've got out of the question. So we list out our variables and we see that the final velocity is 24, the initial velocity is 6. T we don't need to worry about. The acceleration is what we have to work out and the distance travelled by the particle is 25 metres. We look to the formulas that we've got to use that apply to those variables that we have there and it'll be V squared equals U squared plus 2AS and the sum of the forces will equal mass by acceleration. So this time we're going to go menu 3, and one for solve, and we have 24 squared equals 6 squared plus 2 times the acceleration and times 25. And we're going to solve for the acceleration. And we get that this is 54 on 5. The next thing we have to remember is we have to use our second formula. Okay, so we've got the mass, which was 7, and we're going to multiply that by 54 divided by 5, and we will make it as a decimal, so we'll just put a decimal point in there and press enter. And therefore the answer or the magnitude of P is 75.6 Newtons. Okay, question three. A golf ball is hit from the ground with an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal with a velocity of 60 meters per second. The ball is subject only to gravity and air resistance is negligible. I'll just say that second sentence again. The ball is subject only to gravity and air resistance is negligible. Given that the fairway is level, 
What is the horizontal distance traveled by the ball to the nearest centimeter? So we need to have a look at what this looks like. We've got our golf ball, which is struck with 60 meters per second. It flies for a while until it hits the ground. We then have put on some directions and vectors. And we have taken the positives upwards and to the right. And then we've got our component vectors of the initial velocity there. And as the motion moves through, we see that when we ball lands, we see that when the ball lands, the velocity going downwards is now negative. We then have to see what equations we're going to use. So stage one is the vertical motion. And we see that our final velocity will be negative at minus 30. We have our initial velocity at 60 sine 30, which is also 30. And we, time is what we want to find, and the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second. The equation we're going to use is V equals U plus AT. So we're going to go menu, algebra, solve, and our final velocity was minus 30, and that was equal to our initial velocity, which was 30, minus 9.8 T, and we're solving for T. We find that that took 6.12 seconds was the time of flight. We'll just go back and have a look at our diagram. So it took 6.12 seconds for the ball to reach the ground. So we're looking at the vertical directions this time. Now we have to look at the horizontal stage of motion because the vertical does not affect the horizontal motion. So in this time, don't, and this time we don't have to worry about the final velocity. We have the initial velocity is 6 cos 30, which is 30 root 3. The time we just worked out was 6.12. Acceleration is zero because there's no acceleration going in the horizontal direction. And once we look at our variables, we find that the equation would be s equals ut plus a half at squared. So we're going to put in 30 square root of 3 times, and if we go up arrow and press enter, and then what we can do is we can move along back to here and get rid of the t and put in a times and press enter. And we find that the horizontal distance traveled by the ball correct to two decimal places is 318.13 meters, or you could say it was 31,813 centimeters.